city there, we have over 700 million people who have no electricity at all. These are 700 million people that just can't stay at home. And we have 2.6 billion people, uh, almost a third of the world's population that don't have access to clean cooking. In those statistics, about 700, 570 million of them reside in Africa and just under 1 billion people um, don't have access to um, clean cooking as well. Welcome to the SDG Media Zone on the sidelines of the United Nations High Level Political Forum. My name is Kingsley Igobo from the UN Africa Renewal Magazine. So my first question is, as a global leader and advocate for the achievement of Sustainable Development Goal 7, which calls for access to reliable, affordable, sustainable, and modern energy for all by 2030 in line with the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, what three key things do you think countries in Africa need to do to end energy poverty on the continent? So one of the first key things that I think is important, which countries have started doing is identifying where these people are within their countries. So where are the people who need electrification? Where are the people who need clean cooking? This allows you to identify the best way to provide clean cooking and electrification to them using a range of energy mixes, knowing that cleaner obviously is better. The second thing is to make sure you have very, very solid policies and laws to help you when you are trying to attract investment or to also help the renewable clean energy market within your country. And then finally, which is more of a global issue as well as an African country's issue, the financing must be there. So, you know, this is public financing, private financing, um, commercial financing, non-commercial concession financing, philanthropy money, all need to come together for us to really achieve this. We're talking about a problem that will cost us about 40 billion every single year from now to 2030. And right now in going into Africa, we're seeing numbers of, of less than 4 billion. So it just shows you the real gap and um, just how much work we have to do to make sure the right amount of resources are actually going in to solve for energy poverty. So nearly 600 million Africans don't have access to energy. That's almost half of the population of the, of the continent. My question would be, my next question is, how have African countries fared in the shift toward clean energy? Are there some good examples you might like to highlight? I think there's some excellent examples of what's going on now. I mean, if I take my country in Nigeria, I led the largest energy access program, um, which focused on um, renewable energy and, and clean energy. And, and, you know, it was a program called the Nigerian Electrification Project, which is still the largest, I believe, um, effective World Bank and African Development Bank program focused on the last mile distributed energy solutions and focus on solar energy in particular. Um, we were also able to power some universities, kind of, you know, this is now going to the megawatts of power for, for universities. There's some really good examples with some hydro projects in, in Rwanda. There are good examples coming out of Senegal. But the problem is they're all too small. We now need to look at scale. And at the end of the day, it's not that there's no progress happening in African countries in terms of electrification, but population is outweighing electrification. Right. So even if you make a progress of a million or two million every single year, you have a population area increase of 10, you know, circa 10 million. So it's, it's, it's really tough. Um, and that's why we need to speed up. And that's why we need, like I said, philanthropy, development, finance institutions, um, governments to all come together and look for new creative solutions to make sure no one is really left behind. How much progress is being made towards rallying the necessary financing for energy investment in Africa? It's important now, especially this year, when the UN is having a high level dialogue on energy, which is the first time in 40 years we're really discussing this topic at the General Assembly. The people are now recognizing that energy poverty is a thing 
And it is really, really important that while we're trying to transition all these other countries to um, green, renewable, cleaner energy, which is very important, that energy access and energy poverty has to be part of the energy transition for many African countries. Um, so I, I, I have a lot of hope and optimism that this year there would be a bigger shift in terms of recovery packages and packages towards cleaner energy in Africa, which we haven't seen before. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has reduced many countries' fiscal space. In fact, Africa is currently grappling with a third wave of infections as we speak. What advice would you give these countries at this particular time in terms of uh, how they prioritize energy investments? For every one dollar you you invest in in clean energy in any country, we we see it. You know, we see the benefits of about zero point nine three cents GDP. So it's just a good economic decision. You know, more jobs can be created in energy access, but also energy efficiency. I think seventeen jobs could be created for every million spent. So there's a lot of things that it's important to do apart from the obvious as in having healthier people because you have electrification, having more yield for agriculture because you have electrification and women play a key role because if you give um, a woman, you know, sustainable energy, she's likely to earn 59% more um, just by having energy. So, you know, we are challenging that there's a big wish list of things you want to spend money on, but clean energy is where you should focus on because it's just good maths in terms of economic growth. Okay, the African continental free trade area under whose auspices trading began in January this year, is expected to catalyze Africa's industrialization. So how might affordable energy for all as well as net zero emissions support, support such industrialization? Well, the fact that Africa is one of the main regions that is going to need more energy instead of less, especially sub-Saharan Africa, is very key. Again, let me put it into perspective. The installed capacity of sub-Saharan Africa, if you take away South Africa, is only 81 gigawatts. That's the same thing as Germany produces. So it's 81 gigawatts for a billion people, right? So Africa, as it is, is only responsible, the sub-Saharan part, for, for less than 1% of global emissions. We want those global emissions to stay low under low carbon trajectories. So we would need solar panels, we would need lithium batteries, we would need inverters, we need lots of technology. And this shouldn't only just be brought from outside, but assembly looking towards manufacturing should needs to be done in continent to cope with the demand. And this is where I think the free trade zone in terms of energy will play a critical part.